trying to be fun? No, I really am looking for a clown. There are no clowns here except you. Do you know a man by the name of Khan? No, I don't. It's very important I get to see him, and... I told you, I don't know it. Do you recognize the guy in this photograph? No, I never saw him. Forget it. The sign listed the price of rooms, and boy, were they expensive. The killer must have been earning a fat wad to pay for accommodation like this. Excuse me. Yeah? Do you happen to know a guy named Khan? That ain't nobody I know. I'm sorry to be a burden on your brain. You ever meet a guy called Plantow? No, I ain't. You missed your chance. If you're quick, you'll catch him at the coroner's. Have you seen a guy dressed as a clown? No, I ain't. Don't tell me I missed him. Oh, that's too bad. I love the clowns, don't you? I've seen daytime television that was funnier. I love it when the little guys get hurt. That figures. Custard buys, hose pipe down the pants, then smack! A plank in the kisser. See you later. Not if you see me first. Just a minute, monsieur. What's your problem? No problem, if you cooperate. What do you want? Just a routine security check. Nothing to worry yourself about. Oh, well, all right. Search him, Flap. You bet. Hey, knock it off. Get off, you big ape. Nothing, Guido. Zilch. Our apologies, monsieur. What? I had to report you to the authorities. Round here, we are the authorities. You want I should break his arms? No. Let him go, Flat. of the killer's hotel. If you're going to pay him a visit, take care. Remember, that guy's a professional. Thanks. I'll be fine. Hi there, ma'am. Well, hello. What can I do for you? I'm looking for a man. You disappoint me, my dear. For one foolish moment, I thought. But never mind. Aren't you going to tell me your name? Uh, George. George Stobart, ma'am. How sweet! I once had a stable boy called George. I am Lady Piermont. The common reaction is to kneel and stutter, but it's not obligatory. A real lady? I mean, you're an honest-to-God aristocrat? Oh, I don't know about that. Few of my ancestors are honest, not even to God. I can trace my family back to the Normans, but don't let that intimidate you, George. Beneath that impressive pedigree, I'm just flesh and blood. The blood may be blue, but the flesh is the plump beef of old England, so to speak. You appear distracted, George. Is there any way I can help you? I'm looking for a murderer. Good heavens! You're a private detective. That's correct, ma'am. What's the term you Americans use? It's on the tip of my tongue. I believe what you're thinking of is Dick. Precisely. Have you come across a man who calls himself Khan? I am familiar with only one person named Khan. 
Genghis Khan, the legendary Mongol barbarian chieftain? No, darling. Kevin. Kevin Khan? I never heard of him. I'd be most surprised if you had, darling. He's a pharmacist in Hemel Hempstead. Organizes fundraising for the Rotarians. Lovely man. Does he have a scar on his cheek? I really wouldn't know, sweetie. Did you know there's a gangster out front? What makes you think he's a gangster? The Italian suit and the bulge in his pocket? I know plenty of men with Italian suits and bulges in their pockets. That doesn't necessarily make them gangsters. That gangster I told you about? He went through my pockets just now. Good heavens! One never knows what to expect in foreign parts. Thank you for the warning, young man. I shall hide my credit cards in my underwear. Are you here in Paris on vacation? No, darling, I'm on holiday. I needed to get away after Algy's funeral. I didn't realize you were mourning the loss of a loved one. I'm not. He was my husband. I'm sorry to hear about your husband's death. You wouldn't be if you knew him, my dear. It gave me the opportunity to take a well-deserved holiday. Daphne suggested a change of scenery. Paris, she said. A world romance is just what you need to take your mind off the inquest. Well, the closest I came to romance was being wooed by a drunken Breton chef. I must say I was disappointed with his cock arms. Not at all what I was expecting. I was thinking of cutting my holiday short, packing my bags and heading back to Hemel Hempstead. That was until last night. What happened to you last night? I was stricken, Mr. Sturbot. Cupid's arrow has cleft my bosom. They couldn't really miss. It was just as I'd always imagined it should be. The intimacy of candlelight, romantic music tinkling across the room, and then a stranger's glance. Those brooding eyes, that suave manner, those tight trousers. He was the man I'd been waiting for all my life. I'm glad he finally turned up after all these years. Ah, but it wasn't to be. He was merely toying with my affections. And if I ever catch up with him, he's dead. Who was the guy who led you on? His name is Merlin. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? My God, it's him! That's Merlin! She represented everything I loved about the English. The lady was totally deranged. Merlin? You mean King Arthur's wizard? Good heavens, no! Monsieur Merlin is a fellow guest. He's the man I've been telling you about. That's the man who spurned me. The man you know as Merlin is a fake. What do you mean, sweetie? He's a murderer. He also uses the name Khan. I am shocked, Mr. Stobart. Shaken. I took him to be a gentleman. A man of honor. Do you know, I'd rather like to assist you in stitching him up. When did you last see Merlin? It was no more than an hour ago. He came downstairs and spoke to that clerk chappy. Something passed hands. I couldn't see what exactly. A briefcase? No, smaller than that. A bundle of papers, perhaps. The clerk put it in the hotel safe and Merlin went out. Are you sure you saw Merlin putting documents in the safe? Yes, darling. Positive. I wonder what they were. Obviously something of great importance. Yeah. I'd sure like to get my hands on whatever it is. I'll bet they had something to do with Plantar's briefcase. Has Merlin returned to the hotel? No, he hasn't. Are you going to search his room? If I could get in there, I would. I have to go, ma'am. Excuse me, didn't I see your picture in the news? You're that Nobel Prize winner from some unpronounceable Eastern European state. Yes, that is me, in person. I don't want to worry you, but have you had any threats of your life? You know, mysterious phone calls, letters made up of headlines cut from the newspaper. I don't know what you're talking about.
you know a guy called Plantow? I don't know anybody in Paris. Oh, uh, well, this guy's dead anyhow. Why do you ask me about a dead man? I have seen enough of death to last me a lifetime. I'm, uh, sure you have. Have you seen a clown? I beg your pardon? The clown. A guy in funny pants. Have you seen him? My pants are from England. Marx and Spencer. They are a pleasure and a comfort to wear with much support. I'm real glad to hear that. You know, it's good to know you Nobel Prize winners are human too. In my country, the people make do with string and egg cartons. For pants? For everything. Oppression is the mother of ingenuity. Thanks for your help. Goodbye. Hanging from a brass hook was a key and a plastic tag. It was the register of guests staying at the hotel. There was no one registered under the name of Khan. If the killer was staying here, he'd used a different pseudonym. I want some information. Who are you? The police? I'm conducting a private investigation. Ah, I know only too well what you mean. That is one of the drawbacks of the catering business. When people book into an hotel, they leave their morals at home, no? I'd like to retrieve something from your safe. Ah, oui, monsieur. May I see some form of identification? Uh, like what? A driving license, perhaps? I don't drive. Your passport? I don't have it with me. I could show you my operation, Scott. I'm sorry, monsieur. I must have some form of unique ID. You won't find a more unique ID than my scar. I'm sorry. I must insist on a more traditional identification. Rats. About the key hanging on the hook over there. Oui, monsieur. Which room is it for? Number 21. Is that room taken? No. The guests checked out this morning. I'd like to check into room 21. That is not possible. How come? You said it was vacant. It is reserved for another guest. Rats. No, monsieur. Dutch. Do you know a man named Plantow? No, monsieur. I'm looking for a man who dresses like a clown. This is a highly respectable hotel, monsieur. There are no clowns here. If you say so. I've just been manhandled by a gorilla. Yes? I do not see any signs of a gorilla. No, not a real gorilla. It was a guy who looked like a gorilla. It happened right out front of this building. Let me get this quite clear. Are you complaining or bragging? I want to know what you're going to do about it. The scrawny one has a gun. I suggest you contact the police. Can't you do anything about them? What goes on in the streets of Paris is hardly my responsibility. Aren't you concerned that your guests are being intimidated by gangsters? No one else has complained, monsieur. Did they steal anything from you? Well, no. They didn't find what they were looking for. What was that? I don't know. I don't think they did either. I do for you now. Would you distract the clerk while I borrow a key? Are you asking me to aid you in a criminal act, darling? 
Oh, no. It's the key to an empty room. And why, may I ask, do you wish to gain access to an empty room? Do you plan to squat? No, ma'am. Scouts on it? I was never in the Boy Scouts, ma'am. Oh, you should have been. What were your parents thinking of? It's a fine way for a boy to get licked into shape. Now tell me, why do you want to get into that room? I'm hoping it's the key to Merlin's room. Well, how can I refuse? I shouldn't think my feminine charms would be much use in this case. But a good dose of English arrogance might do the trick. I say, you there, flunky. Oui, madame. Listen carefully. You do understand English, don't you? But of course, madame. Good. I wish to deposit some jewellery for safekeeping. I understand. Are you quite certain? Oh, bien sûr, madame. Over to you, my dear. The sign on the door read 22. If the tailor's description was correct, this was the killer's room. It was a key ring bearing one large brass key and a tag which read Hotel Ubu. It wasn't the right key for the door. Maybe it wasn't the right room, but this was the right key. The bed was several times larger than the narrow cot I'd been given at the place I was staying. I had the kind of feeling in my stomach that would usually send me running to the bathroom. I couldn't believe my luck when I found two items in the pockets of the pants. The first was an ordinary matchbook. No matches, no clues. The second was a pass card which read, Thomas Merlin, Gruber Electronics Corporation.
There was no one registered under the name of Khan, but the name in the book for room 22 was Merlin. What now, monsieur? Does this pass mean anything to you? That is Monsieur Merlin's property. That's right. Merlin the murderer. I want to see what he's left in your safe. Impossible. I cannot betray his confidence, no matter what you say he's done. You're making a big mistake. Maybe. I can live with that. Thanks for your help, buddy. What can I do for you now? I got the key. Thanks for your help, ma'am. I found this pass in Merlin's room. So, that deceitful little man is passing himself off as an electrician, is he? Uh-huh. This guy probably has a million faces. I showed the pass to the clerk, hoping he'd give me Merlin's papers. But he wouldn't buy it. He's too scared. I'll give him something to be scared of. George! Did you place a package from Merlin in the hotel safe? I did, madame. And did my friend here show you Merlin's identification? Indeed he did, but... What's the problem? He isn't Merlin. A mere academic detail. Give him the package. But that is against the law. I happen to be a justice of the peace, you silly man. I am the law. If he tries anything, shoot him, George. My pleasure, Lady Piermont. One moment, please. You know, I haven't enjoyed myself this much since Greenham Common. I don't know what I would have done without you, Lady Piermont. Voila, monsieur. Le manuscrit de Monsieur Merlin. Thanks. How satisfying. An Anglo-American alliance would actually work. The clerk had given me a tightly rolled sheet of parchment. I decided not to unroll it until I was safely back in Nico's apartment. George, are you okay? I'm fine. Hey, I've got something awesome to show you. Oh, yeah? What is it? A surprise. Oh, I don't like mysteries, George. I can't tell you just now, but I'll come show you soon.
hold it right there. Search him again, Flash. Nothing, Guido. Okay, let him go. If the manuscript was what Flap and Guido were after, they were going to be disappointed. I couldn't wait to get back to Nico's apartment and check it out. You're just not going to believe what I found. It's not another part of the clan's costume, is it? It's a medieval manuscript. Khan left it in the safe at the Ubu. It's incredible. Is this what he took from Plantark? It could be. Which means... It's worth enough to kill for. Look there, two guys on the same horse. Oh yeah. Maybe they couldn't afford one each. What of it? Have you ever heard of the Knights Templar? Their official seal was an image of two knights sharing a horse. Whatever this manuscript means, it's connected with the Templars. How come you know about these knights? I learned about them while writing an article on the Crusades. This guy, named Hughes de Payen, arrived one day at the court of King of Jerusalem. He offered to protect the Christian pilgrims from the displaced Muslim armies. The king would be able to guarantee safe transit to Christians in the Holy Land. Safer journeys meant more pilgrims, and pilgrims meant trade and wealth. The Templars proved invaluable to the king as a mercenary army. It was said that they never asked how many the enemy numbered, just where they were. And as the years went by, the Templars grew in wealth and numbers. They were so rich. Even kings came to them for loans. But at the height of their power, they fell foul of the king of France. He rounded them up and turned them over to the Inquisition. Thousands of Templars were subject to torture and confessed to heresy. Of course, at the end of the Inquisition, there wasn't much they wouldn't confess to. The last Grand Master Jacques de Molay was burned alive. But the treasure of the Knights Templar was never found. Jeez, so the treasure is hidden waiting to be discovered? If there ever was a treasure, it's been lost for six hundred years. Anyway, we're supposed to be investigating a serial killer, not a medieval treasure trove. But maybe that's what the clown and his accomplices are after. Maybe this manuscript is the key. You'd better leave it here for safekeeping. Think about it, George. One guy's already died for it, as you said yourself. Besides, that parchment is fragile. Okay, okay, I'm convinced. You keep hold of it. What are you doing to help trace the killer clown? Research, George. Yeah? You have a copy of the clown's yearbook? I have a telephone and lots of contacts. Oh. Well, did you find anything useful? Not yet. I'm employing my first and most useful weapon. What's that? Patience. Oh, I've heard of that. Isn't it a substitute for decisive thinking? Have you found out any more about the murders? Well, it may be nothing, but both the clan's victims visited Paris earlier this year. When? The second week of July. They were both here at the same time. Did they meet? I don't know, but I can't imagine it was coincidence. Let's take another look at the manuscript. Let's face it, we need help, George. Someone who knows about these things. Who do you suggest? Indiana Jones? I know a guy who specializes in medieval studies. His name is Lobino. Huh. <laughs> Some stuffy old fossil who gets horny over ancient relics, I suppose. 
Far from it. Andre isn't the stereotypical professor you have in mind. Where can I find this Lobano guy? At the Krone Museum. I'll give you the address. There's a woman looking at her reflection in a mirror, but the reflection has three hideous faces. She reminds me of the Wicked Queen in Snow White. She was the one who said mirror, mirror on the wall, wasn't she? She made me cry so much when I was a kid, Mom carried me out of the movie theater. She didn't frighten me in the least. Like I said, I was only a kid. I didn't like the crocodile in Peter Pan either. A knight with a crystal ball. There's something written on the scroll beside the knight. Yes, but it's written in Latin. Per disciplinum mea lux videbis. By my teachings, you will see the light. You speak Latin. Where did you learn a trick like that? A trick? I studied law, okay? I can read Latin. Ma, you're touchy. Tell me that again. Through my teachings, you will be enlightened. There's a guy working on a loom. He's weaving a carpet or a tapestry. Or a duvet cover. It's a clue to a place, I reckon. Somewhere famed for weaving and ships. Where folk live in barrels? It beats copper boxes. There's a guy with a sword and a bull. The only mythological bull I know of is the Manitou, but he was only half bull. I don't think I'd like to be half a bull, even if it was the bottom half. What's that object between them? It looks like a gem on top of a tripod. The night scroll bears a phrase in Latin. Through my teachings, you will be enlightened. There's a woman looking at her reflection in a mirror, but the reflection has three hideous faces. There's a guy working on a loom. There's a guy with a sword and a bull. Between them is a gem supported by a tripod. I found this in the killer's room. What is it? A credit card? ID. Thomas Merlin of the Gruber Electronics Corporation. Never heard of him or the company. Maybe I'll check out the Kroon Museum. I'm sure you'll find it useful, Georges. Don't you think it's kind of stuffy in here? Better stuffy than dead. What's the problem? Fumes from car exhausts? Not just that, monsieur. There's a new bag of bar opened up across the street. The Laughing Buffalo. So what's the problem? They cook their burgers on a charcoal grill. And the fat falls on the open flames. The amount of organic compound and smoke particles released is astounding. Since they opened, Local air pollution has doubled, and it stinks like a funeral pile. That is why I keep the windows closed. Pardon me. Oui, monsieur? Are you Lobino? Oh, no. Fancy you mistaking me for him. No, I am the deputy custodian. But Lobino does work here. Work? I wouldn't go so far as to call it that. He studies here most days, but as you can see for yourself, not today. Do you know anything about the Knights of the Temple? No, sir. Not a sausage. Do you know anything about medieval manuscripts? Not me, monsieur. I am no scholar. Though people often mistake me for one. It is the uniform, I guess. They see the clothes. They are impressed. 
And they ask you to park their cars? They ask me to park it. No, no, no. They assume I am an authority on the exhibit in my care. Whereas you know next to nothing about history. Of course not. All I am saying is, I am no scholar. Not like Monsieur Lobino. Thanks for your help. The matchbook bore a pattern of swirling color and the words, Club Alamut. In the case was a spindly tripod, blackened with age and pitted with rust. It was identical to the tripod pictured on the manuscript. A notice identified it as 15th century from Western Ireland. It had been found in Loch Marne at the site of a Knights Templar preceptory. Ireland! Was it? This tripod was found in Ireland. I will have to ask you to keep your voice down. I'm sorry, I was excited. Pardon me. Oui, monsieur? Can you give me any further information about the tripod? Certainly, monsieur. It's infamous. That tripod? That belonged to John D. What's the importance of John D.'s tripod? D. was the most famous escapologist of the 16th century. The Odini of his time. Don't you mean alchemist? Escapologists use ropes, chains, and handcuffs, not tripods. Well, whatever he was, that is the tripod he used in his experiments. What kind of experiments did John D. perform with his tripod? Oh, the usual. Didn't you study chemistry at school? Yeah, but we skipped over thaumatology. Can I take a closer look at the tripod? What? Get it out of the case? Ah, uh, no! That tripod is protected by a sophisticated surveillance system. How sophisticated? A painfully loud alarm bell. How is the alarm bell triggered? By the slightest pressure on or movement of any part of the case wherein that tripod is situated. It strikes me that to call your alarm system sophisticated is, well, stretching the truth a little. It has never failed yet. The sophistication is in its simplicity. The sign on the tripod says it was found at a Templar preceptory. It does? Yeah. It doesn't mention John D. at all. Most remiss. You don't know anything about the tripod, do you? No, I don't. I never had much of a start in life, you see. I owe a little education again to my uncle. He was an optician, but he also doubled as the village school teacher. He taught me the alphabet. Well, 19 letters of it. The bottom row of the chart was uh, too small even for him to read, so he left them out. Why don't you start over and enroll for adult education? You know, I never thought of that. Do you think, if I studied art and did all my homework, I could be a professor of history? At your age? Dream on. Thanks for your help. Hello? Hi, it's George. I have been reading about the Templars. You know, the politics of the Middle East at the time of the Crusades is fascinating. Did you read anything about their treasure? No, George. I've made a rather interesting discovery at the Croon. There's no need to sound so arch, George. What is it? A tripod, attributed to the Knights Templar, and just like the one on the manuscript. What of it? What of it? Aren't you excited? The tripod was found in Ireland. It sounds like a long shot to me. 
We have to research these Templar guys properly. Get the facts, the old story. And find their treasure. Several hours later, I arrived in Ireland, the Emerald Isle. I'd been lucky to get a bus from Dublin to the tiny village of Loch Marne. On the way out, the driver told me there was only one service a day. Hi there. What? What's your name, kid? Who are you calling, kid? Who the hell are you? Rosso's the name. Murder's my game. Are you a detective? Let's just say I'm here to find the truth. Cool. Just like on the telly. Cut the crap and tell me your name. Liam McGuire. What are you doing hanging around the bar, McGuire? I'm on the run. From me dad. Why? Did you do something bad? I ain't done nothing, boss. You can tell me, kid. Is it your dad? Oh, sir. He drinks every last penny down his evil throat. And there's me poor old mother, bedridden and dying of presumption. I tried to buy her medicine. Chopped firewood for father Mahoney till me fingers bled. The old skinflint cheated me too. But I took the pennies he gave me back home. Look, ma. Says I, see what your darling son has earned with his own sweat and blood. When suddenly, me dad appears and grabs the loot. I'm off to Dublin, heavy drinking, says he. Watch out till I get back. That's why I runned away. Something in the grin on his face told me he wasn't being strictly truthful. Compared to him, Huckleberry Finn was a candidate for altar boy of the year. Have you seen a guy dressed as a clown? Here in Loch Marne? They all dress like clowns. The man I'm looking for is a dangerous psychotic. Jesus. It's just like that film I saw. Did this clown see? And he's after this kid who saw him kill a guy. He tries to warn the sheriff, only no one believes him. Then, while he's in the tub, the clown cuts him up with a chainsaw. My God. That doesn't sound suitable for a kid like you. Who are you calling a kid? I'm 25. Yeah, right. You're not a day over 14. Oh, no, it's 25 that I am. Married with a car and three kids. Ten kids if you count the wives. What can you tell me about the castle, McGuire? What do you want to know? Well, can I get inside? No. It's locked up. Does anyone live there? No. Only... What? Oh, nothing. You know something about the castle you're not telling me, don't you? No. What is it you're covering up? Is it something you're scared of? I ain't scared of nothing. I'll give you one last chance to tell me about the castle. Oh, yeah? And what if I don't? Then I'm taking you back to school. Oh. There's a ghost. It's called the Phantom Aloch Man. You're not telling me you believe in ghosts, are you? Mister, I seen it with me very own eyes. Last Tuesday night, I went up to see what that dig was about. I just reached the top of the wall when I hears this awful noise. What sort of noise? A horrible snuffling and snorting, like O'Brien's pig, only worse. It was coming from inside the castle. Did you find out what was making the noise in the castle? No fear. I just sat there on the wall like Humpty Dumpty. The moon was cracked and greasy like an old dinner plate. 
The yard was full of shadows that could have been hiding anything. I would have gone home, but me legs had lost their stuffing. See you later, kid. Okay, mister. Hey, McGuire. What do you want to know? Did you get to see the ghost? Indeed I did. And a fearsome sight it is, too. I sat on my ass, waited while the moon went down. Then out it comes from the shadows, all grey and tattered and hunched over like an old bent willow. Then I hears the spluttering and splashing and horrible laughter in the dark. I was so scared. Why well, I fell off the bloody wall. I'm sure there's a rational explanation for what you saw at the castle. There is. The bloody place is haunted. See you later, kid. Okay, mister. Hi, do you speak English? Well, no. Uh, what if I was to say no? An implication of cognizance shrouded in denial. A pretty poser of a paradox, indeed. I gave him the look I'd perfected when I was twelve and was going to be the greatest hypnotist of all time. It was a killer. Are you attempting to hypnotize me, or is it the constipation you're suffering? I was a little out of practice. Good book? A book? It's a passport to a world of fantasy and imagination. Yeah? What's the title? Creative Shelfing for Beginners, the 1978 edition. What's so cool about home improvement? There's nothing like it. The resinous autumnal aroma of seasoned wood, the rhythmic grasp of the plane. Ah, no wonder our Lord came to Earth as the son of a humble carpenter. I bet he was a wizard with a chisel and a length or two before. Surely the betrayal of Christ's adoptive family as humble artisans is a symbolic metaphor. I don't know about that, but I know they were carpenters. Haven't you read the book? Well, no, but I have seen the greatest story ever told, and I don't recall Jesus putting up any shelves. What can you tell me about the castle? Not much, I'm sorry to say. Most of its history is long forgotten. Ah, but if these old stones could only speak, what stories they'd tell. Stories to make your toes curl and your blood run cold. You know, this castle is said to be over 600 years old. Who built the castle? Mad Feelin', the first lord of Lochmarn. Well, I say lord, but actually he was little more than a village chieftain. He built his castle from the remains of the Templar Preceptory. Where was the site of the Templar Preceptory? Right here, on Temple Hill. Feelin' built right on top of the old wall. It's said that deep beneath these walls, there's a Templar chapel. Did Pegram discover the chapel? I don't know. His workers were sworn to secrecy. Do you mind if I climb up your haystack to get into the castle? What? You'd break your stupid neck for sure. Do you think I'd stand by and see your brains dashed out? I'd be very careful, and I promise not to sue. You won't get the chance, not while I'm here to stop you. I have to go now. I'd been taught not to judge people by their appearance or their clothes or the length of their hair. Nobody ever said anything about runny noses. The white whiskers on the bartender's flushed face were like garlands on a Christmas tree. 
The resemblance ended there. The top of his head was too slick and shiny to act as a perch for a Christmas angel. There was a vacant look on his cow-like face that said quite clearly, nobody home. His elbow rested on an obviously soggy piece of towel. The guy sat in the corner as if he was a permanent fixture. The guy with the fiddle seemed oblivious to everything except his playing. Meanwhile, everyone else in the bar seemed oblivious to him. Hi there, old timer. What? Nasty cold you've got there. As soon as the words left my lips, I regretted them. Is there such a thing as a cold which isn't nasty? I put the question to Father Mahoney. Father, says I, why were we born to suffer snot? What did he say? He said, it's my reward for being out all night like a sinner. <laughs> Pious prig. Anyway, this is no ordinary cold. It's the hay fever. Polynosis? Thank you. You're not a policeman, are you? Excuse me? Police. No, I'd know it if you were. Can I buy you a beer? Very kind, I'm sure. But I don't drink the stuff Leary sells. What's wrong with it? I've seen what it can do. Can you tell me how to get into the castle? Don't even think about it, me bucko. Lockbarn Castle is haunted. That's what the kid outside told me, but I don't believe it. Then you're a fool. Have you ever seen the ghost? To be sure. With me very own eyes. Can you describe the ghost? It was horrible. A wee stunted beast. Long beak. Straggly, flappy wings. Are you sure it wasn't a wild animal? A rabbit or a skunk or something? Skunk? In Lachman? That'll be the day. No, that was a ghost, to be sure. I think I know what you saw on the castle wall. I know what I saw. I don't think so. It was the kid, McGuire. What? He was up on the wall last Tuesday night. He thought you were the Phantom of Loch Marne. Oh! Ghosts don't bother me. I still want to visit that castle. You can't. It's not open to the public. There's no one around to stop me, is there? That's right. Nothing human, anyhow. I'll see you later. Hello again. No. What? What's that you're making? It's a necklace, me poco. Oh, sure. Made out of steel wire? <laughs> That's right. A necklace for my pretty one. When my little lover feels it round her slender neck, she'll be mine. All mine. <laughs> If I was a woman, I wouldn't think much of a wire necklace. It's not made for a woman. I've got my sights on tastier dishes than women. Flesh as smooth and tender as a maiden's. Bones as soft and white as a newborn babe's. Rabbit, that's it. That's what gets my juices flowing. <laughs> Ah, so you're making snares to trap rabbits. That's right. Do you have a problem with that? Damn right I do. Isn't it painful? Only if I get me fingers caught. I'm talking about the rabbits. Do they feel much pain? You bet. <laughs> I'll see you later.
My name's George. Pleased to meet you, mister. My name's Fitzgerald. Can I get you another drink? Oh, no, thank you. I, I shouldn't be drinking at all. I'm on tablets of my nerves. More than a pint and I'll pass out. What can you tell me about the castle? There's nothing there. Just an old ruin. How old? I really couldn't tell you. Have you ever explored the castle yourself? I used to play there sometimes, when I was a kid. Then one of the little ones fell off the wall, broke his head and died. We didn't go there anymore. You haven't been up there recently? No. See you later. <laughs> Top of the morning to you. I beg your pardon? Well, that's what you Irish say, isn't it? Do you want something? Or are you just flaunting your xenophobia? Well, I, I was trying to be sociable. <laughs> Is it a room you're after? That's not a bad idea. Do you have a vacancy? I could. If you don't mind waiting until the last guest checks out. No problem. When will that be? When the undertaker comes to collect him. What can you tell me about the castle? You're the second person to ask me that today. I don't know anything about the castle. It's only an old ruin anyway. Who else was asking about the castle? He said he was a reporter. He was asking about the little people. I could have told him a tale or two about the little people. He might have paid me to hear what he wanted me to say. Anyway, I chucked him out on his arse. Good for you, mate. That's the way to deal with journalists. I'll try a glass of beer, please. Is this your first pint of real ale? Uh, well, I guess so. What's real ale, anyhow? Beer that's brewed from natural ingredients to traditional methods. It shouldn't be kept under pressure or refrigerated. And finally, it should have a good body and distinctive character. In other words, it's flat and warm with bits in, and it makes you fall over. Have you served any, uh, clowns recently? No. You're the first today. Seriously, I'm looking for a man dressed in a clown costume. Or would he be having a little white dog with a black patch over the eye? I shouldn't think so. Thanks. Hi, my name's Stobart, George Stobart. Hello there, mister. What can I do for you? Can you tell me anything about the castle on the hill? Oh, I don't know much about anything. You should ask Mr. O'Brien here. He does joined up writing. Would you be one of them history fellows yourself? That's right. Professor Stobart, Miskatonic University. You're an archaeologist, and you're asking us about the castle. Excuse me, Mr. O'Brien, the gentleman was talking to me. How come you didn't leave with the others? I didn't know they'd gone. Oh, yes, packed their spades and shovels and away they went. Seems I missed all the excitement. What excitement? <gasps> Do you know anything about Pegram's excavation? Only that he didn't have the right tools for the job. What he needed was shovels and a JCB. Pegram was digging for historical remains, not coal. Is that a fact? What the hell for? Here's the science of archaeology, Pat. Understanding how people used to live by what they've left behind. One day archaeologists might be digging up our remains. Imagine that, Mr. O'Brien. I wonder what they'll find. Well, it won't be arrowheads and beakers. Fast food cartons and flavored condoms, more likely. 